Let's get some practice with open systems by calculating how long it takes to fill a water tank. And we'll do so under the assumption of steady flow. As we'll see later in the semester, this simplifies our lives greatly. So this is the tank, and this is the pipe leading to the tank. All we're trying to do is to time this process. So water starts entering the tank, and we want to know how long it'll be before the tank is completely full. I'll call that variable T sub full. That's what we're trying to solve for. We know that the density of water is approximately 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter. Water is incompressible. We also are told that the velocity of water within the pipe is 6 meters per second, and that the pipe itself is an 11 centimeter radius cylinder. You should always assume that pipes are cylindrical unless you're told otherwise. Here you're told explicitly it is cylindrical. So those flow conditions describe what's going on in the pipe over here where the water first starts coming in, but you can also see that the pipe is a cylinder with parallel sides, it's not getting wider or narrower. That means that actually, since water is incompressible, we know for a fact that its velocity over on the left must also be its velocity over on the right. For an incompressible substance, if the cross-sectional area of the pipe hasn't changed, the velocity also cannot change as a result of conservation of mass. We need one more detail. We know what's coming in on the pipe, but we don't know how big the tank is. Obviously, a bigger tank should take longer to fill, so we have to be told that the volume of the tank is 12 cubic meters. Now we're ready to figure out how long it takes to fill it. Let's start with one of the fundamental equations of conservation of mass for an open system, namely that dm dt equals the difference in m dots. And you can look at your lecture notes to remind yourself what each of these terms are. In this case, we actually do have a dm dt that's non-zero if we consider our system to be the tank. Initially, there's no mass in it, and we want to know when it's full of mass, so dm dt will not be zero, but m dot e will be. So remember, the subscript i tells us about inflow mass, the subscript e tells us about exit flow mass. In this case, there is no exit from the tank. It only has one pipe leading in, and water is coming in through that. That'll be our inflow. We can ignore any exits, so there's no hole in the tank. Now we can separate this out into two integrals that we can do. And they're pretty straightforward. Since we're dealing with a steady flow, the value of m dot i will be constant. That means we're going to have some very easy integrals. So let's set up the integrals first. On the left-hand side, we'll get the integral of dm. And that goes from 0, namely the initial mass, there's nothing in it, to the final mass, little m. On the right-hand side of that equation, we have the integral of m dot dt going from what I call time equals 0 to time t full, which is what we're trying to solve for. But the nice thing is, m dot i, I already said, is constant, doesn't vary with time. So actually, both of these are very trivial integrals. Left-hand side is just the total mass. The right-hand side is m dot i times t full. So we can solve for t full, and we see that it's the total mass divided by m dot i. All right, we'll keep that. Relatively straightforward, but of course, now we need expressions for both m and m dot i. We're not given either one directly. Well, for m, generally speaking, what you have to do is you have to integrate the density over the volume. And this would be the density of water over the volume of the tank. But in this case, the density of water isn't changing. Water is incompressible, so we can pull that out of the integral. Again, we have a trivial integral. The mass in the tank when it's full will just be the density of water times the volume of the tank. And we are given both of those. Okay, that's good. So now we can update our expression for t full just by plugging in the new expression for m. But now we need an expression for m dot i, which we are not given explicitly. Well, from your lecture notes, you can see that m dot, generally speaking, is the density times the cross-sectional area times the velocity, as long as you're dealing with uniform flow. So that assumes that the velocity profile has the same velocity everywhere within the pipe. The density is the same everywhere within the pipe. Those are reasonable assumptions at this point for this problem. So now we can substitute that expression in for m dot. And you have to be a bit careful. We're going to have a problem that has both volume and velocity in it. You remember my convention, velocity has ears, okay? So we'll plug that into our expression for t full. We see that t full equals the density of water times the volume of that tank divided by the quantity, the density of water, times cross-sectional area of the pipe times the velocity of water within the pipe. Well, those two densities are the same. It's density of water, so we can cancel that part out and get that the time it takes to fill the tank is the volume of the tank divided by the quantity, the cross-sectional area of the pipe, times the velocity of water within the pipe. Hey, wait a second. That thing in the denominator, that's the volumetric flow rate. I point that out in the lecture notes. You may notice from this expression that actually the volumetric flow rate times the time 
equals the volume. That kind of makes sense. It was a volumetric flow rate, meaning that it's a volume divided by time. If you multiply that by the relevant time, you get out the volume. That would have been a good shortcut to take, but I wanted you to see where it came from. Okay, so we'll keep all of this. Now we can just plug in values for volume, velocity, and area. So T full equals 12 cubic meters. The cross-sectional area of the pipe, I said it's a cylinder, so its cross-section is a circle of area pi r squared. So I put in pi, I put in 0.11 meters squared, making sure to get into SI units cleanly, and then the velocity we said is 6 meters per second. Multiply all that out, and you get that the time it takes to fill this tank is 53 seconds. That's pretty fast, considering that we had to fill a tank of 12 cubic meters. It's quite a bit of water, but it's also the case that we were dealing with a pretty big pipe. 11 centimeters cylindrical radius pipe is, you know, a pretty big sewer pipe, and we're shoving water through it at a rate of 6 meters per second. This thing fills up pretty quickly.